Hello, and welcome to development part four notes. Uh, just a little reminder of where we've been, where we're going. So in our last three notes, we really focused on physical development. So what a child does up to about the age of 12, we talked about physically uh, with Piaget's stages, and we also talked about cognitive development. So not only what the, the maturation process that they go through, but the things that happen um, cognitively, so thinking-wise, how they progress from object permanence to egocentrism, uh, to theory of mind, to concrete, to abstract. And now we're going to focus on the social interactions that uh, also play a huge part in development. Okay, so let's start out with uh, development. We're going to talk a lot about rhesus monkeys or um, primate studies in these type of um, social interactions because we can't legally do these things to, um, to humans. Uh, so let's talk about stranger anxiety. Uh, and this one is pretty universal, but stranger anxiety, we're still talking about that first stage of Piaget's development, uh, so in the sensory motor. This is where it's kind of exactly what it sounds like. Newborns or children have anxiety about strangers. It starts to occur at around eight months when they have a pretty good schema for faces. So they have seen the same faces, they react to the same mom, dad, grandparents, close friends' faces, and they start to understand that this face, uh, they have a schema for that face and what is associated with that. So. Most of the time, it is positive, right? This is a person who loves me, who feeds me, who plays with me. And when they're not able to assimilate a new face into that schema, they have they they get distressed. Okay, so very um, verbal, like ah, you know, like screaming when uh, taken away from mom. The peaks at about 18 months, so it starts at about eight, goes to about 18. But there's just this intense fear of strangers, the clinging to mom's arms, to when they give them to a new person, them like reaching out for uh, their mother. So there's some, we'll talk about attachment uh, theories later, but talking about insecure and secure attachments. But stranger anxiety, which you need to know, during that first stage of Piaget, about eight months, and she's an extreme fear of, of strangers. So depending on what type of um, uh, secure attachment, let me go down here, da, 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 sorry. Um, We'll talk about secure attachment versus insecure attachment with uh, monkeys and then kind of what we can, uh, what I'm going to say, put on to humans' behavior. But first let's talk about what it means to be attached. So when we're talking about attachment, uh, there's a couple origins that we've already discussed, like imprinting, and we'll go back to that soon. But we're talking about an emotional attachment, so not necessarily a physical. And what what research has shown, and we'll talk about Harry Harlow, is that touch, the physical touch, is much more important than we originally thought. So Harry Harlow is uh, did all these studies with uh, monkeys, and so what he noticed after he was doing something else, I forgot what the original study was, but they had these terry cloth blankets, so you can see this kind of fake money monkey here, this terry cloth blanket, and these monkeys were taken away from their mothers at birth, and they were raised uh, without parents, so they were get, given food and shelter and taken care of, but they didn't have parents. And what they noticed is that when they took them away, the, the monkeys often wanted the blanket that they had been um, fed in, right? So they had an attachment or emotional attachment to that blanket. And so they started doing some more experiments. So they thought maybe they're just um, associating that with food. So they started removing the blanket and the food at the same time. And so here's a picture here. So they have two different types of mothers or fake mothers. This is a wire mother that has food attached to it, right, but is not warm or there's no physical touch. And then here's a terry cloth mother that has the, the smiling face and the blanket that goes along with it. And what they found is that the monkeys far preferred this non-feeding mother than the one that provided food. So there was some type of emotional attachment to that terry cloth blanket and that fake mother that, um, that they, they kept and they wanted with them to feel good. Okay, so familiarity, um, this is really, if you go down to the bottom, uh, when children are developing, anything familiar equals content. They like hearing the same books, they like seeing the same movies, they like seeing the same people. And when you see those same things, that kind of brings back a, a content feeling or feeling good. Okay, so the critical period, so let's talk about um, the critical period. So a critical period is a time period in which a, a human must be or an animal must be exposed to a certain stimulus in order for development to occur. 
So we talked about this with language acquisition, that during that critical period of language acquisition, they must be exposed to language because once that period is over, it is very difficult to pick up on new language. This is true of attachment and making emotional connections, that there's these critical periods in which that must occur or else the, um, the child will always feel um, discontent or um, unhappy. Okay, imprinting is that immediately after the uh, birth when a, um, an animal imprints on their mother and Im the mother imprints on, on the baby. So this is very like instant with um, things like birds, right? So ducks, the first thing that they see they imprint on and that is what they follow after. It's an instinct for survival. In humans, we don't have imprinting. So it's not necessarily the first thing that a uh, baby is exposed to or first um, person but we have something more that it's coined the sensitive period in which there's a time period it's not immediate like imprinting in which uh, it is a highly uh, what I want to say sensitive time to to attach to a human being and if you miss that sensitive period of attachments there's some repercussions that can happen later in life all right so let's talk about then attachment with humans insecure and um, unsecure so again attachments going to be my emotional attachment most associated with touch. So social um, uh, development, looking at attachment difference, um, we're also going to talk about some parenting styles here later. But Ainsworth, so Mary Ainsworth was another um, social psychologist that was looking, again, with monkeys. And what she noticed is there was two different types of um, attachment that could be displayed with children. There's a secure attachment and an insecure attachment. So when children display a secure attachment, it's generally because they have sensitive parents. Uh, what, means, what that means is that when they're taken away from their parents, they often show distress, just like um, an insecure attachment. But if they're in a place that's loving and warm, they get over that attachment and they're able to, to still function. Versus a child who has an insecure attachment tends to have unresponsive parents so they never know um, when they cry or when they leave um, if they're coming back right so they have a kind of a distrust with that parent and when they are left alone in a new situation uh, a, one of two things can happen they either withdraw and become very like scared and afraid they won't interact with anything new or they become extremely distressed and cry the entire time so that's an insecure attachment Here's a picture, so they found this to be true again with the rhesus monkey. So here's a picture of a, um, a rhesus monkey with an insecure attachment that when left alone would just crawl up into a ball and not like be extremely afraid of new things. All right, so attachment, is this because of the parents or the children or a combination of both? Uh, they've actually, so they coined this, uh, it's, what do I say? It's a correlation, right? So we have a correlation between sensitive parents and securely attached children, and we have a correlation between insecure and um, unsensitive. But is it one causing the other? We don't know. Remember that correlation does not always cause, um, does not always equal cause. So temperament, the vocab word, um, this is a characteristic that shows your emotional reactivity. So we could say that when a child's born, they have a, an easy temperament or a difficult temperament or a slow to warm up baby. So type of temperament, this is also the root word of temper. So someone who has a temper, their emotional or characteristic reactivity um, might be difficult, right? They're easy to, to make, um, uh, to set off emotionally. Um, what we say with babies is depending on their temperament, uh, we can kind of say what type of baby they are. So easy temperament babies tend to sleep regularly, they tend to eat regularly, and they have, show excitement for people that they know. So mom and dad, they coo and caw. If you have a difficult temperament, might have an un, um, unnatural eating schedule or sleeping, and then difficult with new faces. And then slow to warm up babies are kind of in the middle. They're easy once they, um, they know who you are. All right, so now we're going to kind of introduce a new scientist or psychologist um, named Eric Erickson. It's an awesome name. And Erickson is going to, to exist at the same time with Piaget, so he has stages as well. There's lots of different stages in this, um, this unit. And Erickson's stages, and we'll talk about them more in depth, but his first stage is that a baby needs to establish basic trust with the world. And basic trust with the world is going to... Uh, the baby or the, um, the child knows that the world is predictable and reliable. 
Okay, so Erickson's stages kind of progress that there's this um, thing that they have to conquer before they can move on to the next stage. So if they never establish basic trust, everything that comes after it uh, will always be um, a little off or askew. Okay, so Erickson's basic trust. Um, babies learn that the world is a reliable and predictable place. Okay, now let's talk about uh, monkeys that were deprived of attachment. So again, we can't or tend not to do this with children, um, except for case studies because it's unethical. So what we find with uh, monkeys that are deprived of attachment, so that close attach, that emotional closeness at an early age, um, is some really bad things that happen to them later. Okay, so what they found with monkeys is that uh, monkeys that were abused at early age tend to breed abuse, meaning that they were then later abusive parents. Um, if they never had a close mother, um, they tended to, when they got to uh, puberty, not want to mate with anyone. I'm sorry, not just a mother. So they never attached with a mother or a father, anyone close um, with the monkeys. They never attached to anyone later in life. Even when they got to breed, they didn't want to. If they were impregnated, so they artificially impregnated monkeys that were um, early deprived for attachment, they tended to abuse or even kill their um, offspring. All right, so some really, so early attachment deprivation led to no attachment ever. This is not necessarily true with humans. So humans, what we find is that about 30% of the people that are abused as children become abusive parents. So it's actually uh, a less of a percentage, a way less of a percentage than we find with the monkeys. All right, so people that had disruptive attachment, um, meaning that they were attached to a, a parent uh, emotionally or a, a a person and then taken away early, so there's a disruption in attachment. Um, they also, kind of those insecure, were upset, withdrawn, despair, and long lasting, but not permanently. But if they were away for too long, it became um, detrimental for them later in life. This is a lot of the reasons why courts are very reluctant to remove children from their homes, even when there's signs of. Um, bad things going on because at early ages removing children from their home so disrupting their attachment can lead to problems later and then there's this uh, this uh what i want to say study in your book and there's um, a couple things have been done with daycare so does daycare affect attachment uh, if they're attached so right you're disrupting it they're attached to their parents and then they're go to daycare or even school for eight hours a day um, what does that do with attachment and what they found is that Children that go to daycare that are high quality, it's usually associated with higher socioeconomics, so they have more money, um, have no change in attachment with their parents because they're in a warm, loving environment, a nurturing environment for the, for the entire day. So their attachment is not uh, affected whatsoever. Children that were put in uh, low quality daycare where they were either put in front of a TV or not interacted with, with adults or other children did show disrupted attachment later in life. So it really depended on the type of daycare, and really the type of daycare was often um, a factor of their, their class, so their socioeconomic status, if they were um, wealthy or poor. If you don't have a lot of money, you can't afford a really good daycare. And then there's also some things that were drawn in with that study. So is it that the lack of um, parenting at home, or is it the lack of, of food if they don't have enough money? So there's a lot of things that kind of play into attachment with children that go to daycare. Okay, in our next notes, we're going to start talking about self-concept and then gender roles. So as we are um, growing up, we have this maturation that occurs physically, but what do we do with um, our outside social influences on our gender roles and then our concept of self? Uh, have a good weekend.